forecast changed on me a little bit. It's calling for rain to start, well, a chance of rain this afternoon. You can see there's no sun. I think there's a 40% chance this afternoon, and then again tomorrow morning, and likely actual showers. 100% chance overnight, so trying to focus on getting in underneath the eave where it's water's going to fall on me. I can get back on the porch when it's if it's raining and still work there. So I'm going to try to get this side done before the rain starts. It's taking long. Um, that's most of the day yesterday. I'm probably looking at all day today to get maybe this side part of the back done and then another day after that and then a day to finish the soffit yeah I've got and then I gotta um, trim the windows and the doors so that that's a final um, trim and seal so that keeps critters and weather out so I've got my work cut out for me before the weather does change now fortunately even on the rainy days especially on the rainy days means it's going to be a little bit warmer and the entire forecast for the next seven days forecast and temperature is well above normal for this time of year and also nighttime temperatures that I really need for the caulking to set up that's uh, going to stay well above freezing as well I think like six seven eight nine degrees Celsius even so again fortunate to get this you know, a stretch of warm weather just in time to get this stuff finished. I have to rake the joints out perfectly clean because all this moss, all that moss dust just stops the caulking from from adhering. So as I'm moving the caulking gun down, the bead of caulking is just falling out. So that has to be, that has, so that has to be completely clean so I rake out stuff that's sticking out, protruding from the crack, and then any gaps that uh, from a bad scribe or bad knot, or bad uh, um, notching with the chisel, filling that in with a little bit of rock wool, and then seal it with as thin a bead as possible. So, hopefully I have enough material. Some of the gaps are worse than others. A couple bad gaps that I, where I scribed and notched it, especially in the winter and especially the top log where I had multiple things to notch around. This log, two of the uh, tie beams and then the back log. So sitting up high and trying not to uh, scribe accurately, accurately and notch around each of those. These uh, cross logs especially didn't uh, didn't get that 100% accurate, so the whole length of the full scribe on the log ended up being up about half an inch or more. So that's it, three days took me to chink and caulk the uh, full cabin in this. I just need to tool this quickly, scrape that in. But that's it. So. What's next? Well, that's it. I've done the chinking and daubing. So that's a like a chinking product, but it's basically caulking. But it doesn't set up the same as regular caulking, and it's kind of granulated, like it's kind of like got, got like particles in it, like sand. So it looks like um, sort of cement chinking, and it stays more flexible. So. It was a good product to use. I'm happy with it. Blends in. I didn't want that joint to stand out, which is why I chose that dark brown or whatever it's called, a dark uh, dark wood maybe. Anyway, blends really well. Um, not a perfect job. <laughs> it's not something I don't know. I used to do when I was a sheet metal worker. I had to you know, do a lot of caulking. Pretty much every day I had to seal up the metal joints and stuff but um, that was 30 years ago so I'm a little out of practice but I'm happy enough with it doesn't need to be perfect it's not like I'm handing this cabin over to a homeowner that's gonna be really picky I'm uh, just trying to keep a rustic look to the thing and I don't know it achieves that <laughs> um, now I need to finish off the soffit though so the 
the walls themselves are airtight the gables are pretty much airtight but the uh, soft of course has to be finished things can continue to get up in there including weather uh, but especially like red squirrels and mice right now so I'll spend another what day probably yeah probably a day I can get the soffit done at least on the porch uh, maybe maybe won't get the back finished completely in a day but anyway I'll try and then what I think I'll mill these timbers get the footings in for the outdoor kitchen and then finish trenching that um, conduit down to the solar panels and that's it for outdoor stuff that's critical I think and it's just a matter of cleaning up and you know stacking continuing to get firewood and stacking it but yeah I think that's it I think I'm just beat the weather again <laughs> can't believe how nice and warm it is 15 16 18 20 degrees I think a few days from now Celsius sunny it's supposed to be down much colder than that and colder at night especially um, next week is deer season so I'm hoping we get a lot colder weather for that anyway get back to uh, work here so to <laughs> this is a little hump in the very center of the cabin where the supporting beam from the cellar is so basically what happened is I everything's pretty level on the floor which is the ceiling of the basement and which is the structure the foundation that holds up the whole cabin so it's you know, it's six by eights here 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 and then one down the center. Well, the one down the center is slightly high. Probably could be as much as three eighths or half of an inch. So what was happening is if I left the door sill at the same height as the floor, which is one inch of floorboard, then as the door swung open, it was binding back here. People thought that the uh, door was sagging from the weight, but that's not what it was. Four hinges on here, it's fine. Um, so I've raised that door sill up another an inch so I have a two inch door sill I'll do a little transition a tapered transition piece on the back here so you don't stub your toe coming to the door and so you can sweep things out easier but um, yeah it worked <laughs> bottom line I had to take an inch off the top of this and then shave it down a little bit uh, top and bottom so it swings nicely so it swings in we'll put a door stop here 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 and then trim the outside and then a small door stop on the bottom so it'll have a little gasket to seal the seal the door against the door stop anyway that's <laughs> I only have four screws in and only two hinges on right now so I'll put the other two hinges on screw those in get the other uh, screws in here and then uh, like I said finish trimming so I can seal the cabin make it 100% airtight when I say airtight I mean no obvious gaps there's gonna be some kind of airflow minor airflow but anything like this is sealed up so I'll get that trim on anyway yeah I'm happy with that <laughs> 